The focus of this video is rectus abdominis diastasis. This is a condition in which a ridge appears when patients tend to strain their abdominal wall muscles. It is also called divertication of the recti or just simply separation of abdominal muscles. We will find out what is it, what are the symptoms, diagnosis and the various treatment options. In this cartoon over here you can see a normal abdomen with strap like rectus abdominis muscles from the ribcage down to the pubis on either side connected by a thick connective tissue called linea alba which generally is quite strong. On the side supported by three layers of muscles, the external oblique, the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis. Typically in young women after pregnancy especially if they have had large babies and they are of small size or middle-aged men who are overweight. It is this rectus abdominis shown over here which stretches and allows separation of the rectus abdominis muscle on either side thus allowing a bulge to form in this area is called diastasis. This typically is not this typically is not uniform throughout the length of the abdomen and the weakness is just just not limited to this area but maybe a general weakness and a loss of tone of the core of the abdomen. In general, however, a separation of two centimeters or above would fit the diagnosis of diastasis. It is very important to differentiate this condition from a ventral hernia, which arises from a defect within the linea alba and a pouch forms on the outside. This is at risk of strangulation around the neck of the hernia. No such risk exists with the diastasis. These two conditions may coexist and it is important from the, for the clinician to differentiate or to diagnose appropriately. The great majority of patients may not have any symptoms at all other than the bulge that's visible and sometimes it can be quite pronounced especially when the patient is training as trying to get up from a lying down or a sitting position. There can be associated abdominal wall weakness not just up and down but also transversely within the core abdominal wall muscles. Lower back pain may be present and it may also be a cause of poor posture. In women, especially after pregnancy, those with pelvic floor weakness may develop a tendency of urinary incontinence. Rarely, issues such as constipation are worsened because of an ineffective core musculature. And if there is excess thinning of the linear alba or the thick connective tissue, it may raise the risk of a ventral hernia. However, the great majority of the patients lie in this category with either no symptoms or just bulge and coning. The diagnosis of diastasis is generally clinical. However, this is an area that is often mistaken for a hernia and patients are sent to the general surgeon for repair of a ventral hernia. Patients who have large sized diastasis or those who are candidates for surgery may require, may require imaging such as an ultrasound or a CT or MRI scan to determine the exact size of the diastasis and the state of the abdominal wall musculature as well as whether or not there is an underlying hernia. For the great majority who have small to medium sized diastasis, a simple clinical examination by an experienced clinician should be enough. Now let's look into the treatment of this condition, typically which includes just watch and wait, use of physiotherapy as a first measure, there is a device with unconfirmed benefit and finally surgery as a solution. There are three main determinants when considering treatment for diastasis. First is the symptoms such as backache, poor posture. The second is size, how big is the diastasis and what kind of disability it produces because of its size. And the third is cosmetic appearance. Is there a lot of loose skin and is there a jelly-like feeling to the abdominal wall? With these in mind, the first thing to consider is for women in pregnancy, whether exercises and physiotherapy may help prevent the situation. The jury is still out. However, there are other benefits of exercise and maintaining core strength during pregnancy which should be considered. The first treatment to consider for moderate to small diastasis is physiotherapy. That is exercises that build core strength and improve the tone and function of the abdominal wall muscle, especially the rectus abdominis. There are numerous exercise programs there's a lot on the internet and on YouTube and I don't want to go into detail. There are some studies that support the use of physiotherapy in improving outcomes for moderate and small diastasis. There is other evidence that shows that in some women the response and recovery happens after childbirth regardless of whether or not they've had physiotherapy. The consensus appears to be that physiotherapy ought to be offered to improve the function and strength of the muscles and help with the symptoms. There is a device 
which is used along with the tuple technique there isn't enough evidence to definitively or conclusively prove its benefit creams and lotions applied on the abdominal wall will not improve the function of the abdominal muscles hence for large diastases those with symptoms or very poor cosmetic appearance especially in young women and in whom physiotherapy has failed surgery is an option there are important considerations before surgery is undertaken such as the weight of the patient the excess skin and the fat whether or not there's an associated ventral hernia which is an all to be together separate condition and has to be treated differently these operations are always carried out under a general anesthetic because a large proportion of these are to fix a cosmetic defect plastic surgeons undertake a fair volume however some general surgeons also perform the procedure especially if there is an associated ventral hernia there are many techniques which can be through an open operation or through the minimally invasive route if there is a large overhang of skin and fat then an abdominoplasty means the incision is made lower down and the skin is lifted right up until the rib cage the separated muscles are plicated with stitches and the defect is closed in that manner there are again several variation of this technique too patients who undergo this procedure have to be mindful of recovery and follow the advice that is given to them with surgery there are always risks of complication and recurrence in the long term this is a brief overview of rad or rectus abdominis diastasis if you have any questions or comments please do share